and welcome back to another episode of Quick Spin, the Auto Week podcast that takes you to the essence of the automobile. Today, we are talking about the 2020 Mercedes-Benz G550. That's right, we're talking G-Wagon. And joining us from the G-Wagon is the great Patrick Carone. We're going to talk about this G-Wagon in just one second. But before we do that, you can check out this G-Wagon on our Instagram page. That's at Auto Week US. Hey, you can also head to our Facebook page. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get all the great Auto Week content we deliver daily. And one last thing before we start talking about this G-Wagon, we've got to pay the bills. Our friends at Road & Track have some big news to share. The Premium Lifestyle Magazine for the automotive enthusiast is now fully loaded. Become a member of the Track Club and receive six supersized double issues a year, plus access to digital content, dozens of partner privileges, exclusive invites to editorial events, and first dibs on insider automotive events both online and around the world. Hop on in by visiting roadandtrack.com slash join. That's R-O-A-D-A-N-D-T-R-A-C-K dot C-O-M forward slash J-O-I-N. And Patrick... Tell me about this 2020 Mercedes-Benz G550. Well, Wesley, I was lucky enough to have this thing for over a week, which is pretty different from normal for me. Usually I'll be able to get a car for a weekend, maybe a long weekend if I'm lucky. I had this thing over a week. And so short of doing any like real off-roading, I really got to like kind of experience everything but this car, like different weather, different types of, you know, roads, you know, just kind of taking naps in the back seat. Pretty much anything that you could do with a G550 that's legal, I uh, I had a chance to experience. So, it was pretty cool. It seems pretty cool. And I think the only thing left out on your uh, little itinerary of actions is cruising rodeo, which I believe is the uh the quintessential G-wagon activity these days. <laughs> that's true. Actually, you know what? You're right. I didn't really do any like you know, obviously not on Rodeo, but I didn't do any like, you know, cruise stunting as the, uh, as do the kids say that? Is that a word that people use? Well, I, I'll say as much. I'm almost 30 and I regularly say stunting. So, okay, cool. So probably not. No, I think the kids have yes. moved on. <laughs> as long as we overly enunciate stunting, I'm sure people will think that we're, we're very cool about it. We show up to places with our skateboards. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, no, I didn't get to like, you know, do any any kind of things like that. But even driving in, uh, you know, not down A1A Beachfront Avenue, you still get so many looks, so many thumbs ups, like people just shouting cool car, which is funny that this is happening with the car that's essentially, you know, from the outside could be like over 50 years old. Yeah, they've uh, not really pushed the envelope in terms of exterior design, but underneath a completely different story, which we're going to get to in a little bit. But Patrick, you so graciously did something that I think is very interesting. You recorded your first impressions of driving the car, which we're going to hop to right now. So I just hopped into the G550, and the first word that comes to mind is absurd. First of all, the thing like, you know, it looks like it just drove off a World War II battlefield in this like matte black paint. It's like covered in the, the dust of war. And, uh, but then the inside, it's like total Mercedes Benz luxury and tech. It's these like rich maroon seats and the lighting and the infotainment screen. It's like you're in a nightclub. It's just the most striking thing is this juxtaposition between the outside and the inside. So Patrick, the interior of the G550, especially the one you had, which I believe had a Designo interior. Uh, I'm sure Correct. The, the Germans out there are laughing <laughs> at my terrible pronunciation. Opulent, I don't know if, if that word goes far enough. It is, it is, like you said, ab absurd how nice the interior is on this effectively like military designed off-roader. I mean, it's just like, it, as like eye-popping as the car is in the exterior, you open it up and it's like, even more so. I, and in this particular one, the contrast was great because like I mentioned, it's like a matte black on the outside, but then the inside is this like kind of deep, I, I guess they call it classic red over here, but it's it's almost like a kind of maroon with the super soft quilted seats. And, you know, the lighting also kind of has this, this red tint. And it's just, uh, you know, we're lucky enough to get inside lots of cool cars and fancy rides but even like taking that into account this is like oh my god this is really really pretty striking 
pretty striking. But how was it? Was it very comfortable? Was it user friendly? Was it uh... so comfortable? Okay. So user friendly. Like I, I think I might have mentioned this at some point, but like the headrest, just so soft. And like I'm never like putting my head back while I'm driving, you know. But I wanted to with this, just you know, the softest leather, um, everything you know, ergonomically, everything where you would want it to be. And of course, you have all, the, you know, like the massaging seats and all of those little bonuses like that, which are, you know, very nice to avail yourself of. Uh, massaging seats definitely help on a road trip. But I believe you also recorded yourself while you were slightly into a longer drive, because I think you took this on a road trip for what is known as a vacation. Yes. Which we're going to jump to right now. I've been driving for about four hours straight and car feels great. I feel great. The seats are so comfortable. The headrest is just like so soft and comfy. And I love the seating position. You're so high up. And of course, the visibility is incredible because you're, you know, just really driving around in a giant box. And, you know, it's very smooth, very comfortable. It's definitely a big leap from the previous generation G-Wagon. They did a great job with that. And there is so much power. You know, there's this twin turbocharged V8, gets over 400 horsepower. It really makes me wonder what you would need the AMG version of this thing for. I know exactly what I would need the AMG uh, version for, and that's for the side ex exhaust and the AMG badges. Right. Okay. I, I, I forgot about the exhaust, but... Besides the badges, like, Wesley, I'm not kidding. Like, you do not need more power in this thing. I just... It makes me not understand how this is not the ultimate version of this. Let me put it that way. I mean, to be fair, Patrick, it is a 416 horsepower in a vehicle that is uh, two boxes on wheels. <laughs> that is true. And for listeners out there curious, that is the uh, same four liter that you would get in the AMG version, just uh, in a different tune and a different setup. You know, having driven the previous generation, which um, I think they switched over, what, like a, a couple years ago, a year or two ago from the last G-Wagon. I know like one of the big differences, you know, you mentioned the exterior design wasn't too much different, just kind of subtle stuff, is that there's an independent front suspension. And I think that that makes a huge difference in terms of like the kind of really long on-road driving like I was doing. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Is, is it noticeably softer and easier on the driver? Yes. Yes, it is. And it's not just the seats. Just all together. It's very smooth. You, you don't feel it like you used to with the other one. Uh, the fun thing about the G-Wagon, this is, this is kind of like almost a meme in the enthusiast world. So you guys are probably getting where I'm going. The door locks. Patrick, you recorded yourself playing with the door locks and the doors, and it is... I'm not convinced that you weren't just playing with a bolt-action rifle. <laughs> but we're going to go to that clip right now. The G550 is such a solid machine, and I think the best way to understand that, if you don't get a chance to drive it, is to just listen to how it locks, how it unlocks, the noises the doors make as they open and shut. All right? Lock. Unlock. Door open. Door shut. I think my neighbors think I'm a crazy person. The rear, which is actually hinged on the side, this giant door with the big spare on it. Again, the sounds, the sounds, the sounds. All right, the big finale, shutting the rear gate. Ah, so satisfying. Patrick, that is truly satisfying. Uh, and it shows how much attention that the Mercedes engineers pay to the G-Wagon. No, oh, absolutely. Also, re-listening to that clip, it sounds like I'm like controlling the car like it's a robot where I say, doors open, <laughs> and they open. Doors shut, and they shut. I was actually locking it and unlocking it and opening and shutting the door, but I think I was uh, pretending like I was on Star Trek or something. Well, it never hurts to narrate your actions. It uh, gives the <laughs> listener a little bit of a more in-depth experience. And uh, spoiler alert, n the next generation, it could be voice automated. We don't know. We don't know. You might have just leaked uh, something, something from an NDA. Hey, it's possible. So, Patrick, you might not have gone off-roading, which is fine because I doubt many of these actually see any real wheeling. But what you did do in your trip up to the, the Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes. Yep. Well, the, the beautiful up north of New York. You took it down what it sounds like a little rural road, which we're going to go to that right now. So, I haven't been able to do any off-roading in the G550, but I'm on some twisty roads over here right outside Cooperstown. 
New York on our way to the Baseball Hall of Fame, and it's raining that you can probably hear, and um, all I can say is the car is super fun to drive, it's got lots of power, and it handles great, and, um, you know, if you can't take it off-roading, at least enjoy the drive you're on. If there's a young person in your life who's really into cars, give them the gift of R&T Crew. The ultimate subscription box by Road & Track for kids ages 6 to 10. Every other month, a box is delivered to their door and is stuffed with cool accessories, fun activities, and a magazine chock full of facts, stories, games, and more. Sign up now and receive the all-new Crushing It issue and enter the code AUTOWEEK for 10% off an annual box subscription. Just head to rtcrew.com, that's R-T-C-R-E-W dot C-O-M, and use the code A-U-T-O-W-E-E. Okay. But no, Patrick, so this is a quick spin, as people are well aware, and as I'm sure you're aware, too. And on a quick spin, we try to get to the essence of the automobile. And the G550 has a long legacy before it. So I have to ask, Patrick, what is the essence of the 2020 Mercedes-Benz G550? Now, having done a couple of these now, I knew that you were going to ask that, um, but I'm still not really prepared with a great answer. It's a hard um, question. <laughs> it's a hard question. All I can say is that it's definitely a statement car. Like you are driving in that thing and and you are saying something to everyone else in the world on the road who sees you. And I guess it's kind of like, you know, depending on who you are, you sort of define what that statement is, right? Are you, you know, the despot, you know, who rules some small country and this is how you, you know, get around your lair? Um, Are you some kind of like, you know, for lack of a better term, kind of douche lord who just wants the most opulent, crazy looking thing. Or maybe you're someone who just likes, you know, capability and luxury and like dramatic design all in all in one place. So, you know, it's it's kind of uh, the user could maybe determine what its essence is. That makes sense. That does make sense. But I do have to agree. It is quite the statement car and you can kind of make whatever statement you want with it because mercedes will paint this almost any color under the sun As, uh, looking back at the last generation it had a bunch of really uh, uh, insane colors so a lot of bright purples pinks we had an orange one at the office it was very, oh really very fun very fun well one statement it definitely does make is take me to the gas station I, I feel like i should thirsty it's thirsty note that it's a very which is not surprising at all but you know it's one of these things where it's like you feel like if you're really looking at the gauge you can almost see it getting lower <laughs> how much is this thing i know our listeners like to hear that yeah so i, I got them in roni here the uh the final price on mine the base price is 130 900 and mine with that you know crazy trim and basically every option under the sun uh comes out to 158,000. And sixty-five dollars. Well, that is a lot of money. That is, that is. A, I like the dramatic pause. Yes, that of us both like conceiving of that amount of money. Yes, that is a lot of money. I shouldn't have ordered four of them. I'm extremely wealthy, but I think that's a good place to wrap this one up. Thank you, Patrick, for uh, going on vacation and enjoying this G550. I know it was hard, but someone's got to do it. Hey, it was my absolute pleasure. And also, thank you, listeners, for sticking around with us. Uh, if you could, please go to the Apple Podcast Store or wherever you listen to this. Uh, drop us a five-star review. Tell a friend to let us know how we're doing. Also, if you could, head to our Facebook. Drop a comment uh, comment on the post for this and just say, hey, this is a great show. It's great. And share it to your friends. People love getting new content. But again, I can't stress this enough. Thank you so much for listening. Without your listenership, none of this could be possible.